It's almost dawn on the 17th of August, 1919, offshore on the Gulf of Finland. The silence of the sea is broken by the rumble of speedboats racing across the water. Their bows are bouncing on the calm waves. On their stern, they carry 18-inch torpedoes. Their mission is simple and daring. Attack a heavily armed Russian port. They are to use the boat's small size to speed over the Russian minefield and attack the Baltic fleet docked at the port of Kronstadt. Small motorboats versus a heavily armed base. The British are trying to prevent the Bolshevik forces from using their fleet against the Estonians who are fighting a desperate war for independence against the Bolshevik Russians. And you too can feel the might of commanding a fleet with the sponsor of today's video, World of Warships. Take on the adventure of sea and steel that World of Warships has to offer. It's a naval combat game available on PC for free. World of Warships has multiple ship classes to choose from and it has astonishing new graphics that will take your breath away. And now, more than 40 unique maps with dynamic weather and cutting edge water effects that make the game seas virtually indistinguishable from the real thing. World of Warships is a unique digital museum and it has new content released every month. So get on board now. Try out this great nautical experience yourself, which is also available on consoles. And now, from November the 15th through to December the 13th, World of Warships is running a treasure hunt where you can earn in-game and real-life prizes just for playing the game and inviting your friends. Support the channel and download World of Warships using the link in the description. We hope to see you in World of Warships today. Back on the Gulf of Finland, commanding the second coastal motorboat in the V formation is Lieutenant William Hamilton Bremner. He is to be the first to jump into the mouth of the harbour. They arrive before sunrise and already there is a chaotic scene of explosions and gunfire. Six Allied aircraft dive onto the enemy port, strafing the structures and dropping small bombs across the fleet. They're distracting the enemy in the hope that the motorboats can make it through undetected. But a hurdle remains in the way, in the shape of the destroyer Gavril, keeping guard outside of the port entrance. The sailors expect this, and they had already assigned the boat of Lawrence Napier to sink the Gavril at the start of the attack. Bremner waits for Napier to move ahead. He looks back at his compatriots to see that nobody is moving. Napier is nowhere to be seen. Where the hell are they? Little does he know that three of the boats had veered off course and were running late, among them Napier's. With the firefight raging ahead of him and the knowledge that every second waiting means more risk for themselves and the planes, Bremner decides he's going in anyway. His boat springs to life and accelerates swiftly towards the harbour entrance. The gunners in the Gavril are busy shooting at the sky and completely fail to see as Bremner sails right past them. He slows down by the entrance, expecting there to be a chain boom that he'd have to clear. But fortunately, the entrance is wide open. Carry on. They charge into the port as aircraft fly above their heads. Bremner's eyes are focused on the vessel straight ahead, the cruiser Pamiat Azova. A Russian sailor spots the British vessel and turns his guns towards them. A volley of gunfire comes crashing down from the enemy deck. It's splashing in the sea and striking the wooden craft, sending splinters flying through the air. Bremner and the crew take cover as the cruiser gets ever closer. With the target filling the windshield, he shouts, launch. He pulls the trigger in the cockpit and their singular torpedo is released with a loud bang. It slides backwards and plunges into the boat's wake, its course defined. The helmsman turns a sharp right and away from their collision course. They're running away from the cruiser, still assaulted by the gunfire when Bremner feels a punch on his lower back. Moments later, a massive explosion lifts into the air behind them and the guns are silenced. The torpedo has blown a lethal wound in the Pamiat Azava's hull and she gradually sinks into the port. 
Bremner orders his boat to a corner of the harbour, giving room to the other motorboats to manoeuvre. While they wait, Bremner checks himself. He finds two bad splinter impacts, but even worse, he realises he's just been shot. Ahead of them, they witness multiple massive explosions, rocking other target vessels, the work of their allies. Meanwhile, outside the harbour, two of the three lost motorboats arrive on the scene, and one of them is none other than Lawrence Napier. He sees the battle unfolding and the still intact Gavril firing away. Without a moment of hesitation, he orders to charge for the furious giant. The men of the Gavril spot the incoming vessel and their guns turn onto the British. A storm of bullets befalls a little motorboat as they approach maximum speed. They drop their torpedo and steer swiftly for safety as they hope the payload to strike home. But no explosion ever comes. They've missed. Shells and machine gun fire tear the little boat to shreds until it slows to a crawl and sinks into the sea with their target untouched. Inside the harbour, Bremner is feeling the pressure to get out as fast as possible, but he knows that the second wave of British boats is incoming. Suddenly, searchlights lock on to Bremner's speedboat, blinding the crew with their shine. They're unable to see properly and nobody on board the boat notices as they wander across the harbour entrance. Simultaneously, Commander Frank Braid and his men are charging in, struggling with much the same problem. In a blur, Braid's speeding motorboat slams into the side of Bremner's, shattering the plywood hull almost in half and wedging the machines together. The men can barely process what's happened before machine gun emplacements from the harbour walls open fire on the stationary and brightly illuminated vessels. In the middle of the bullet storm, Bremner and his crew hastily push Braid's boat free as their own sinks under their feet. As Braid's boat breaks free and Bremner's is sinking, the men swiftly board the one remaining speedboat that's still afloat as bullets crack above their heads and slam into the wood. The last soul is hauled on board and Braid shouts to get them out of there immediately. The boat roars, turning right around and racing back out to sea. They exit the port to be met by the onslaught of a still intact Gavril. The Gavril's 102 mm guns fire, launching 37 and a half pound shells along with a never ending storm of lower caliber rounds straight for the little machine. With two torpedoes still at their disposal, Braid resolves to use them. Charge. Incredibly, the small motorboat accelerates towards the Gavril as their flurry of projectiles splash all around. Impacts appear on the boat's bow and some strike the unfortunate crew, including Bremner for a second time. The men push on through the deadly hail as they await Braid's orders to launch, but it wouldn't come. A bullet strikes Braid square in the chest and he collapses on the side of the motorboat, lifeless. Bremner curses, immediately rushing to take the unfortunate commander's place, despite his own wounds. Almost there, keep going, stay on target. The crew valiantly press on. Their boat bounces in the waves. The sound of cracking bullets, splashes and shattering wood fill the air. They're so close, they can almost see the enemy sailors manning the Gavril's guns when Bremner finally exclaims, launch. The two torpedoes drop into the water simultaneously and the helmsman pulls a sharp 180. The men hold on as they power away in haste, leaving behind two trails of bubbles, moving closer and closer towards the enemy destroyer. The enemy fire doesn't subside. Sailors are struck and the craft is suffering constant damage. Bremner looks back, waiting, praying for the explosions to end the barrage. But the torpedoes were badly calibrated and they pass harmlessly underneath the enemy ship. Bremner's heart sinks as he witnesses the torpedoes explode behind the Gavril against the harbour wall and suddenly safety feels miles away. A shell slams into the boat from the rear, sending shrapnel and splinters flying across the deck. Fuel tanks burst, filling the interior of the craft with flaming gasoline and the chilling sounds of failing machinery 
reverberate through its wooden frame. A glimmer of hope remains as despite the odds, the boat continues to trundle onward, but it's violently snuffed out when a second direct impact happens. The small ship slows into a heart-wrenching stop. The barrage of low-caliber bullets resumes in force. The enemy gunners are finding their aim on the now stationary target. Two brave sailors man the double Lewis gun turrets and fire back with all they have, but it's pointless against the destroyer. Other sailors abandon ship, choosing the frigid waters over the rain of steel. Bremner takes cover on board, holding on inside the storm of bullets, splinters and shrapnel. The little craft is torn to pieces by the savage barrage. Water is pouring in through the rapidly growing number of strikes, yet still they fight on until they are all taken by the Gulf of Finland's cold embrace. After the dust settled, three out of the eight boats that took part in the attack would never return. Eight British sailors would be killed and nine taken prisoner. Nevertheless, the raid was a success. The British sunk a depot cruiser and critically damaged a battleship, which couldn't be repaired. These losses kept the one surviving battleship in port for the rest of the Estonian War of Independence. Miraculously, William Bremner would survive the encounter. A Russian paddle boat picked him up from the sea just 10 minutes after the battle. He was struck 11 times, most of which being hits from wooden fragments. He was tended to in the port's naval hospital alongside other survivors and was taken as a prisoner of war. He was kept in Cresti prison for six months before being released in a prisoner exchange on the 4th of February, 1920. Upon his return to London, he was awarded the Distinguished Service Order for his valiant actions during the raid. He continued to serve in the Royal Navy and MI6 throughout World War II before retiring. William Hamilton Bremner passed away peacefully in 1970, aged 75. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and please watch more videos of ours. Thank you.